Hello Indie Game fans, my love of monster taming games goes way back to Pokemon Blue when I was a kid, where the sheer variety and discovery of new creatures was always the best part, and indie developers have kept the genre alive in having such elements both in games like and unlike the Pokemon style traditional turn based RPGs. So here are 10 that I'm looking forward to in 2022 and beyond. Let's begin with Beasties, a match 3 RPG of all things but one that stars adorable critters, adding a hint of Puzzle Quest into the mix. I love my Match 3 titles as well, and combining it with a Monster Tamer is genius, but I do believe that there have been many such titles that attempted to do something like this on mobile to mixed degrees of success, so let's hope this has better luck. This next title is still very early on in development, but of course, I love the pixel art of Trails of Sunder. It's a very classic Pokemon style turn based RPG with some excellently designed creatures, where we just get glimpses of this game at this moment in time through the developer's Twitter account. Interestingly, the developer says that this game has Elder Scrolls inspiration, so I do wonder what that means, but as a fan of all things pixel art, of course I have to give it a mention, and if you can, do buy this developer some coffee via the Kofi link in the description below. One of the most highly anticipated titles in the monster taming space is Kindred Fates, a 3D entry with real-time combat and MMO elements we were looking at a new trailer that was just released a couple of weeks ago. The full trailer is 4 minutes long and shows many aspects, but I've edited it down for brevity, where perhaps most interestingly, we have a direct parallel comparison in Pokemon Legends Arceus coming up next week. The real-time combat makes this very much like an action title, where you're able to switch and transform into your companion monsters or to run around as a human which is pretty interesting. This new trailer does look a lot better than the previous versions shown off, although the environments are still a little grey and drab. It had a tremendously successful Kickstarter campaign to match its ambition, so I do hope that the developers can realise their dreams, and with this due out in 2024, there's quite a bit of time to go, but certainly one to watch. Ova Magica is certainly my type of game since it combines turn based Pokemon style combat with a Stardew Valley farming sim. For better or worse, all the creatures in this are variations of blobs or slimes, but there does appear to be quite a number of variants and even a breeding system to get rare blobs. The blobs can even help out on the farm and do follow you around, so if you love the slimes in Slime Rancher but wanted something a little bit more than just penning them up, this might be the title to get.
It also had a fairly impressive Kickstarter campaign, so I do hope that the developer has the runway that she needs, where it certainly could turn out to be one of the best in the genre. From the opening seconds of this trailer, 90s kids will be able to tell that Essentials is trying to evoke a very specific era in games with an art style that would not be out of place on the Game Boy Color. I remember having one of those with Pokemon Yellow, so of course I'm super interested in this, where the unique hook is that creatures can turn into weapons, which your protagonist then wields, which is very interesting. There are over 250 creatures in this game as well, with what looks to be evolutions and multiple forms, so for a nostalgia hit, keep an eye on this. The art style of 2D pixel art sprites in 3D environments has really been growing on me, which is why Nanokin got my attention one that combines 3D platforming and exploration with good old turn-based RPG combat. Interestingly, this is set in a cyberpunk world, which means interesting character and creature designs with what looks to be positional combat as well, but I simply love the pixel art, making this a title of interest. The nice thing about spreading these out throughout the year is that we do get new trailers for these games where we are looking at cassette beasts here, which is something of interest to fans of the genre. Rather than leading a party of monsters, you appear to be controlling a single pair of human characters who can then transform into monsters after plugging in and listening to cassette tapes in an almost later Digimon kind of way. These two transformed monsters can be further combined into another more powerful form, so I'm very interested to see how this works and how much variety there will be. If you watched last year's video, you would have come across Creature Keeper as well, which is quite a nice departure from the Pokemon style monster taming game since it is more like a 2D Zelda game. You are battling and taming monsters in real time, rolling, dodging and attacking, and can even enlist the help of tamed creatures as well. What I love about this game is all the systems that surround the action-adventure combat, where the more you encounter and fight a creature in the wild, the more you learn about it, filling up a journal which is simply one of the best ways to indicate progression in-game. Monsters can be tamed by cooking and feeding them their favourite food where there is even an ingredient growing or gardening aspect. Nothing too new to show off here, but the developer has been actively giving updates on Kickstarter with playable alpha versions going out to backers, but I have very high hopes on this and hope it turns out well.
One of the wildest monster taming games in recent memory is Pell World, one that has been dubbed Pokemon Gun, which is a darker take on the monster taming genre. The action and art looks fantastic, where you have the expected real-time combat and even a farming, base building and breeding or fusion mechanic. However, it does appear that someone or some organization is abusing these poor creatures as well, conducting experiments on them or forcing them into sweatshops manufacturing guns, and there's a whole ecosystem in place where these creatures are eating each other. This new trailer shows off more of the gorgeous art and is of note since developer Pocket Pair is also behind the tremendously popular Craftopia, currently in Steam Early Access, so this should turn out very well. It will be no surprise to fans of the channel that I'm most excited for Kuromon, since this is a pixel art entry that is pretty much Pokemon in all but name serving as a very tantalizing what-if scenario if Pokemon continued with pixel art rather than 3D graphics. There are the equivalent of shinies, team battles, evolutions, elemental strengths and weaknesses, and even a built-in Nuzlocke mode, so the developers certainly are fans of Pokemon and do know what they are doing. The most exciting news is that this finally gets a release date after many, many years in development, releasing in March this year, so fingers crossed that it will be all that we dreamed of, taking the number one spot. For more monster taming games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.